Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Skimmy 1717. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing my San Martin SN0017G, and Grogu is wearing my Sanda 1108. Grogu said Mando accepted a contract to hunt down an escaped Twi'lek who was hiding in Anchorhead. Mando paid a guide to show him where the Twi'leks tended to live. As they approached, the guide said, That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twi'lek zone. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at the watch. The watch did not come in a box. Skimmies never do. Skimmies are ultra affordable watches. Boxes would just raise the price. Another Skimmie on my channel. I usually am fairly happy with Skimmies considering their ridiculously low price point. This watch is case is similarly shaped to a Patek Nautilus, but that really is the end of the homaging as the rest of the watch really bears no resemblance. This is a simple three-hand plastic quartz watch with no date. It tells the time and that is it. It's only $12, but for a few dollars more, you can get a Casio FW91, which does oh so much more, but sometimes we just want something that looks nice and tells the time. A three-hand of quartz with no date is the ultimate grab-and-go watch, as you really only have to set it twice a year with daylight savings. The watch is 37.6 millimeters if you measure at the flats of the bezel. But, but 42.9 millimeters if you measure this end of the case to the crown guards. It's got a 48.9 millimeter lug to lug, but it's only 11.1 .1 millimeters thick, and the lug width does not apply, but it's 25.2 millimeters at the widest part of the strap, and it only weighs 37 grams on the supplied silicone strap. Unlike the Skimmie 9286, they actually got the shape of the bezel right here. And then if you look at the dial, there is a sunburst effect on the dial. Then we have the Skimmy name, and the Skimmy does not have a logo. Then it says quartz, and no mention of water resistance, but you get 50 meters. So I don't know why they didn't put that there, but no big deal, I guess. And then we have baton indices, and they are not loomed. And then we have the numeric 12 at the 12, which is not loomed either. Then we have a chapter ring with minute markers. And then we have skeleton hands with loom tips. And then we have a second hand that has no loom and the second hand seems to miss all the marks. And there is no date on this watch. We have an unsigned crown. I wish the crown was black, I think it would look better. And the crown action's fairly loose. So if we go to set it and go to press it in, see just, just pressing it in will move it. So you have to be really careful when you press it in. And that one jumped. But sometimes if you hold it with your thumb and finger, oh, that one jumped too. So yeah, setting this is a real pain. It's just the curse of the cheap quartz watch. Their movements have really loose crown action. They're really hard to set accurately. But the good thing is since they're quartz, you won't have to do it very often. So once you get it right, it'll, you won't have to touch it for a while. We just have a mineral glass crystal. It says Hardlex in the ad, but Hardlex is Seiko proprietary, so it's not Hardlex. A lot of these AliExpress watches, they'll say Hardlex, but that's just their way of saying hardened mineral glass. Then the case is a it's not metal it feels like a plastic i looked at the aliexpress ad and it didn't say what it was made of it said an alloy and that's not <laughs> this is not an alloy so i'm assuming it's just plastic it doesn't i don't know if it's metal coated with plastic or just straight plastic and then we have a case back that has the four little screws which is pretty typical of plastic watches. And then it says water resistance 5 ATM, which is better than most Skimmies. Most Skimmies are only 30. And then uh, you got the model number 1717. 
That's going to be always gives you the battery code, which is kind of a nice. You can make sure you have the battery before you take it off. Then I don't know what the movement is. It doesn't say, and I don't want to take these screws out. But I'm assuming it's Chinese. If it's Japanese, they, they usually say so. Then we have an integrated silicone strap. It's fairly slick, but not super slick. I felt slicker. And it's got a, it doesn't really have any, uh, well, it's got an indent inside, but it doesn't have any like pattern for moisture wicking. But it's a, it's a sturdy strap. It's nice. And it has two keepers and they're floating and they don't have those little nibs to keep one in place. Then we have a buckle and the prong doesn't seem all loose and the buckle seems sturdy enough. I just wish it was black also. I just think that would look nicer. Here it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. And I only have two notches left, so eight inches is the best you're going to do. And since this is an integrated strap, you can't change it. So if you have a wrist bigger than eight, forget it. And I guess you could poke a hole in the strap if you were desperate. Here we are in the loom room. A $12 watch is not going to have good loom, and this scummy is only loomed at the tips of the skeleton hands. As we speed up the time, the hands are hair better than what I was expecting. Not awful longevity, but not good either. What do I like about this watch? Well, it's light and comfortable. You can hardly tell you're wearing it. And it gives you 50 meters of water resistance, which is a little bit better than 30. And I do like the looks of it. And the case is shaped like a Nautilus, but nothing else is Nautilus-like. What are my grapes and groans? No date. Why not put a date on it? I don't think that would cost anything more. The second hand misses the marks. And loose crown action makes it difficult to set. Do I recommend this watch? Well, I'm kind of torn. I was At first, I was going to give it a negative review. But now that I've worn it for a while, I'm, I enjoyed wearing it. It's light. It's comfortable. It looks nice. And it's $12, so if you like the looks of it, go for it. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Skme 1717. And I will be back with another review. I'll probably finally get to that San Martin I've been wearing. And I think people have been waiting for that review. Because the unboxing video is very popular. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.